I had a very fun brew day with the grandfather. You want to see more about it? Keep watching. Hello everyone and welcome back. In a previous video, I did an overview of the Grainfather uh, to go over some of the highlights and describe what it is. If you haven't seen that uh, part one in this Grainfather series and don't know what it is or much about it, go check that out. Uh, I go over some of the highlights of, of what it can do there, right? This video, this sort of part two in, in this series is uh, a deep dive into a natural brew day. My hands on in a brew day, brew a natural batch of beer with this thing. And I put it through its paces, all the way from recipe design and input to setting up my mobile app, to sticking it with the device, to going through a mash process, boil, an actual brew day. And I even go through the cleanup process in, in this video. It's a long, deep dive. It's a pretty long video. So my rec recommendation is to pour a beer, pop a top, whatever, kick back and relax, and let's get going. The first thing I had to do, well, aside from unboxing it and cleaning it, was to input a recipe into their website. So I did a little video segment on that. So let's go check that out. When it comes time to input a recipe into the grandfather, you have to go to their website. There's a website, a URL known as uh, brew.grandfather.com. And in here, if you go right there, you'll see at the very front page, there's already stuff, some, some 12,000 or more recipes that other people have already uh, created and shared publicly. So you can actually browse through these if you want uh, or you can search and filter by uh, uh, the filters here on the side like uh, uh, the type all grain extract or partial mash or the, the style of beer or the amount of hops in there for example I didn't do any of this I, w I have my own recipes I like to make so I went to the new recipe field and here you can see the new recipe uh, a page here right so you can input a name for your recipe uh, in the description as well as the type of uh, recipe uh, would it be grain extract or partial mash uh, the style which is uh, I think the the uh, BJCP guidelines here right uh, I have this on my spreadsheet as well so this would look familiar if you're coming from my spreadsheet or other brewing software they have this kind of stuff in here uh, your unit of measure which is metric or, or uh, US standard I'll pick US standard because that's where I'm at and all the values change uh, accordingly here and the visibility that's why I mentioned just a few minutes ago on the front page you can actually set this to private so no one else will see it or you can set it to public so everyone can see it and then you can come down here and start adding in your fermentables which could be you know, your grain here so you have a list that's scrolling of all the different styles of grain you can actually uh, type in a value and it'll narrow it down um, but I'm going to pick on two row here for example and see so now you can input the uh, the, the number of pounds in here um, you can override the points per gallon and EBC ratings that are defaulted in here to the uh, style of grain and you can also decide whether it's going to be using the mash it's an extract is it a steep or, or late addition right and uh, this very similar for the rest of these entries too so for the hops again you pick on add hop it'll give you a list of hops to uh, choose from you input the value of the amount the type of hops leaf pellet or plug uh, whether they're a boil um, in the first wort or hop stand or dry hop and the time and the alpha acid units that they represent, right? So um, it's, it's very similar for all of this. Uh, for the yeast as well, you can pick your style of yeast. You can pick on extras such as, um, well, as you can see here, these are like extras that you can throw in there, like Irish moss, for example. And down lower here, you can input some mash steps. Um, there's some some defaults that you can set and change. You can also uh, add mash steps if you're doing step mashing, for example, or uh, you can actually also add fermentation steps and notes down below. Now, I've already input information uh, in here and created my own recipe, so once that's done and saved, you can actually go over here under your login ID here and pick on My Recipes. 
and here are my recipes so far. So you can see I have two of these. Uh, one was my zombie dust, which I have not done anything with yet. I just was just inputting it in there to, to uh, learn the system. Then I decided I wanted to do an amber ale. So I came over here and I made this one. And you can see here all the information is already filled out. right? So uh, the name, style, batch size, uh, boil time, efficiency, um, as well as my um, grain bill here already uh, written down with the percentages of the, the amounts and types everything as well as the hops the, the quantities uh, and the, the times they go in I have a first word addition here of Amarillo and Simcoe for example and the rest of them are in the boil uh, as late boil additions and uh, I also did uh, my yeast was an American Ale 1056 yeast. I picked that from the list. I input some extras here, a yeast nutrient and a world flock tablet. I uh, set my mash temperature over here and, and for how long I want it to mash as well as my fermentation information here, right? And I even added a note. Uh, it says make a 750 milliliter yeast starter. So it was all pretty cool. Now back at the top on the right side here you can see the style information goes along with the style that I picked up here showing the general ranges of that style of beer in, in, in black here along with my actual recipe as to how it lines up with it in the horizontal gold or yellow line here right so you can see uh, where I deviate and match up here with with uh, the original gravity the color the bitterness the alcohol by volume and at the very top there is the hard values for those uh, numbers here as well as a color swatch basically estimating the actual color of my beer so that's all pretty cool and down in the lower right here, this little green ball, if you hover over it, you'll get some options here. So I can delete the recipe, I can print it out to a PDF, export it to an XML, I can edit the recipe and change it. Uh, I can also view brew sessions, which are things I've already done. And Or if my recipe is ready to go, I can say brew recipe, pick on that. And it'll come to um, this brew sheet here, giving you like the, the brew date that you can select. Um, you, you input the actual boil time, the, the volume in, into the fermenter, uh, what your mash thickness is, uh, the calculated values of water that you'll need along the way, and whether or not you're brewing on the grandfather 110 or the 220 volt system, right? And you can set these defaults, actually, um, under your profile. So you can actually set up some of these as hard defaults, I, I believe. And so you have entries here again to enter and, and record your, your mash start and end temps, uh, your actual mash time. So this is all, again, very similar to my brewing recipe template, right? I mean, this is all fields I have there and other brewing software as well. So if you use other brewing software, including my spreadsheet, you'll know that this is all sort of like similar. It's just a matter of learning where everything's at basically, right? And what, one more thing you can do is that you can actually import a recipe. Uh, let's see, let me leave this here. So if I pick import recipe, I can pick a beer XML file. So I know this Beersmith software has, uh, I think they created this uh, format initially, right? So you can, so if you have a XML recipe that somebody posted out there um, on any of these forums, you can actually go and find that and import it right in here. So that's the quick tour, folks. Let's go on and get back to brewing, huh? Once the recipe was finished, I was able to start brewing, so I went right to the connect control box and started messing with it. When I plug the unit in, you see it comes right on, showing the temperature inside the uh, device, as well as you know, a default target, and whether the heat is on or off. And there's some, some buttons here for turning on and off the heat, on and off the pump, and some up and down variables to adjust the, the, the uh, target temperatures in here right you can also um, go into a control menu Whoop. and uh, there's options to, to do step mash programming ma manually as well as a delayed heat or a delayed start to heat up the water which I'll try in the future but not today and there's some pretty interesting manual options on here I'm finding it much more useful though to use the grandfather app that you can install on your phone or tablet like you see here so I have this thing turned on, and this thing's Bluetooth enabled. So I have my Bluetooth turned on with the grandfather app connect, uh, turned on at least, and I can scan for devices. It finds the grandfather, it connects right to it. So that's really nice. 
You can see it's showing uh, the same temperatures I was messing around with on the device manually, along with some manual operations to manually turn on the heat and pump remotely rather than on the buttons on the on the control box. And uh, and this app has got some other cool features in here where you can um, come up through here and go through your recipes. Now I was fooling around with some recipes I was trying to adapt here. I got an American Amber Ale number one, which is what I'm brewing today, already in here. And they also have uh, kits that they sell that go with this thing, but I don't do kits, so I have my own recipe over here. And it's also got, uh, what else we got here? Come on. Uh, you can follow your, your brew sessions. They have calculators in the app for calculating mash and sparge water, alcohol by volume, mash efficiency, and refractometer settings. So you can come in here and enter information and hit calculate and it will give you uh, fast results here. And you can go in your set settings here and this is where you can set up your, your profile for your equipment. For example, are you using metric or US standard units? Do you have a 240 volt or a 120 volt grandfather? Uh, that's going to make a huge difference on the uh, values, numbers and things elsewhere on this app and on the device as well as some uh, some options here which I haven't even gone through all of them yet. So let's go back to my recipe here. Um, let me see here. I don't know actually let's start down here. So I'm going to start a session now so I'm going to pick start session. It's going to ask me to choose a recipe. So I've already went onto the website the brew.grandfather.com and punched in my American Amber Ale number one. I'm going to pick on that. I heard a beep behind me, which means the uh, it's the the device is actually still connected and talking here, and it says start heating. Well, I don't have water in it yet. Down at the very bottom it says fill grandfather with 5.14 gallons of water, then press set or start heating. So I'm going to put some water in here, and I'll be back. Well, that looks about. 5.15 gallons it's kind of hard to tell because there aren't incremental tick marks for the gallons on the left side are the gallon marks and on the right side are the liters the liters are marked every so often every every one liter the gallons are marked every one gallon mark so now it's really a guessing game as to whether i'm 5.1 5 and a quarter so on and so forth but uh it's a it's approximate it's probably good enough i'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on top of this just to help it heat up a little bit faster hopefully okay 5.15 gallons of water press set to start but I want to try to use the app here oh and here's something cool I just noticed it's got the name of my beer at the top here it says American Amber and it's uh, got the periods of ellipses here because it's a long name uh, that's cool actually I didn't notice that before and I was playing with this coming back to the app I can press the start heating button here Heard the beat behind me, which means it's uh, talking, it's heating, just like it says. Cool. So let's come back when it's ready. This thing's heating up pretty well, but uh, I think in the meantime it's safe enough to go ahead and are appropriate to put the uh, mash insert in here. So I'm just go ahead and drop this in to the water. Okay. And this post goes over the top here, the one with the little springs on it. Put that in. So it's just sort of on there like that and then I get this other stopper piece that goes in here and I guess there's a lip here that tells you how high this middle piece can go before it snaps off and it's pretty close. You can see here that the bar has now been decreasing here and it's on its way down to zero because the temperature of the water is matching closely to the target temperature so when this hits to 152 it'll probably hopefully be down to like nothing. And you can see here that the heat is at 35%, which, which means it's uh, applying 35% of the actual max capacity of the heat. I've reached my mash temperature, and now it says add grain. So, you know, temperature of 151, it should be 152. It's probably within the tolerance of error or something uh, in there. But anyway, it says press start to, uh, press set to start mash. Well, I can do that right now, but I like to use, I want to use the app as much as possible here. So let's go to the app. And here it says that the temperatures match, so that's fine. Close enough, one degree. Oh, dropped a little bit, but that's okay. Uh, but here's the start mash, but I want to add the grains first. I'm going to stir it in a little bit at a time. That's what they recommend in the manual, so that's what I'll do. Just 
stir it in. Okay. Stir all that in. I'm going to get down in there deep and pull up anything that's at the bottom. Make sure there's no dough balls in here. It's a pretty thick mash, which is okay, I guess. I think my mashes are generally a little bit thinner than this. Next, I need to install this other mesh piece here now. The, the box or the instructions say to wet the seal around the edges here because it'll uh, come off, slide it down, which I did have that problem putting the other uh, piece like this down on the bottom of this mesh basket. It took me quite a bit of effort to get it down there without the seal coming off. So uh, it looks like the, the sides are a little bit wet, so I'll, I'll see how my luck goes now, but I may have to do this a couple times. Get that through there. They actually went okay. That was better than the, getting the other one down below in there. So just right on top of the grain bed, just like that, I guess. Okay. I'll have to install this piece on here. So I think this piece comes out. So I don't no longer need it right now. This goes down. This whole piece pushes down and it should fit right in there just like that. All right, I'll replace the lid on here. It's attached a restrict leading arm, which is this piece here. So this goes down into here and it can kind of push off to the one side down there. It's, not, it's, it's supposed to rest on top of that, that mesh screen. And this goes into here, screws on snugly. Okay, I think that's snug enough, I hope. <laughs> Now I can press start mash here or press uh, uh, set on the control panel. I'm just going to press start mash right here. And there it goes. So it's got to count down for 60 minutes because that's what my mash profile was set to in my recipe. So it's supposed to mash at uh, 152 for 60 minutes. And uh, so I'm going to let this go and we'll be back. Now here's a view of the controller here. So you can see the same information is showing up here, the time. Uh, left the current temperature the target and the heat percentage of how much output the element is outputting which is now zero because it's exceeding the the, uh, the target and what's nice here are these little lights uh, red light means the heat is on green light on the pump means the pump is on and those are controlled automatically from the app or from the profile that was synced with the uh, with the box here so that's pretty cool you're going to want to make sure that this valve is open before the mesh profile starts. I actually had it turned off and I turned on the pump and it wasn't working. So I actually had to turn this to the open position and now it's flowing just fine. Just something I just have to learn my first time using this thing. And there it goes, restriculating. So um, it's restriculating from the bottom of the pot up through, the, up through this restriculating arm and back in and on top of the mesh there. So now it's, uh, so it's basically restriculating this entire time. And uh, there's an overflow drain down the middle that I can see overflowing a little bit, but I was told that's okay. And uh, well, let's let it go. Now it's recirculating quite well, so uh, it's hard to see through the, through the fog of the glass here, but it's uh, pumping from below, going through the recirculating arm here back in on top of the mesh screen, and it's filling up with liquid. And that liquid is uh, overflowing a little bit through the overflow. Um, part on top there and going back down to the bottom but according to the manual that's uh, okay and to be expected now here's something interesting that's beeping me telling me to heat my sparred water now which i already have done already on the side i'll talk about that in a sidebar but uh that's pretty cool set to dismiss sweet yeah that's awesome yeah i already heated my sparge water um outside of this thing already off to the side and so that was unnecessary but it is nice that they tell you that so that was pretty cool when it came to heat up the sparge water was when I realized that this is not a true all-in-one brew system and that you need a separate sparging storage tank and or water heater to heat up your sparge water separate from the grain father. So it's, it's a mostly in one, all, uh, largely in one, but not an all in one. Now this isn't anything unique to the grain father. I, I, I actually like this device. Uh, th this is actually common pretty much with all of these electric all in one systems. They all claim to be all in one, but truth is just to let you know that that's not 100% correct. So what I ended up doing now, there's a few options here. So what I ended up doing was actually taking my old eight gallon 
brew pot for my old videos and what, because I still have it, right? And I brought it in my house, filled it with water, put it on the stove and heated it up there. Now, once I did that, I was able to pour it into my uh, 10 gallon hot liquor tank cooler that I've done that uh, DIY video on uh, months ago, right? So I put it in there for, for safekeeping and that worked out well for me. But there's another option. You can actually, you can use the grandfather to heat your mash water, but you gotta do it before you start brewing. So you gotta plan an extra hour or more to heat up this water and, uh, and then transfer it to a cooler, like I just mentioned anyway. So you still need a second device to hold the, the hot water. As to how you heat it up, you can use the grandfather or your kitchen stove or your old fashioned propane burner. I almost forgot to mention another option. The maker of the grandfather on their website, they do sell a sparge water heater. It's an electric sparge water heater. So if you're completely 100% electric, they sell a companion heater for this device, for your sparge water. So that's always another option as well. So the mash period is over. So now it's going on to the next step, the mash out step here, where it's going to heat this thing up to 170 degrees for 10 minutes, it says. There it says mashing out right there. So it's saying the same thing here as it is on the app. And of course it's got the full heat applied there and it's heating this thing up. So, uh, so that's pretty cool. Now it set the timer for 10, that's nine minutes. It was 10 minutes of a mash out time. So it heated up and it set the timer itself for 10 minutes. So now it's got the heat reduced to maintain the temperature. So it's saving on power a little bit and uh, eight minutes left here. So uh, I'll come back. Oh, there we go. There we go. Um, mash out's finished. Now, now it says, uh, let's see, sparge total volume. Okay, sparge progress. Use up and down buttons to track progress. So some instructions there. Let's go back to the app. <laughs> the app says finish sparge too. So um, no instructions here, but I see that it set the mash temperature already for a, well, close to a boil and it's already starting to heat up. So I better get on this pretty quickly. So let's resort back to the instructions, shall we? There we go. All right, I gotta pull the inner lifting basket up. Okay, let, let's let's do that. So let's take this off. Oh, probably should turn off the valve here, just in case. It's got a one-way valve here to help minimize getting sprayed, but yeah, it's just a safety feature. Okay, so that can come off. Take off the lid. Lid's a little bit warm. It says to put the little carrying handle back through the holes here and lift this thing up slowly and it's already got sort of a vacuum effect going here and it's actually pretty heavy <laughs> this is a big reason why they tell you to uh, not put this on a table because you'll be reaching over your head to lift this very heavy basket up it's much easier when it's lower like this so all right so let's let that drain and now i start my sparge using the sparge water i heated in, a, in another vessel kind of go around evenly around in this thing and i'll get more well that should be it seems i missed a step here folks so this may have messed me up but uh, I was supposed to push this lid all the way down <laughs> until I touched the grain. And apparently I failed to do that, folks. So I think I screwed up my efficiency for this first batch, which that's all right. I'll adjust for it if, if it comes to that. See, the plate was supposed to be pushed down to the bed to get this water to come up. So you see that there's a water... Um, bed on top of the grain bed but uh, didn't see that kind of got lost uh, filming and not doing multiple things at once and i got sidetracked and didn't pay attention but it is what it is i'll have what i have and i'll measure the original gravity pretty soon now that the sparge step is finished um, it's now heating up already to uh, the, the boil temperature so it's already heating it up now even while the sparge water is still draining through the grain bed and the word is still being collected so this is intended to, to save time basically rather than doing the sparging completely and then starting heating it's actually starting to heat it now so uh, so i kind of like that it's, it's a nice time saver
So the sparge is slow to just a very little small trickle down below here and uh, this eyeballing through the cracks here. I'm not sure if I hit my target pre-boiled volume or not, honestly. Uh, so now I'm kind of curious. I might want to move this out of the way just to see how close I got and whether or not I need to add any more water to this thing. So I'm going to pull this out temporarily, put it into a pot for the moment. Okay. And I'm going to look for the sight gauge on this thing. Let's see, where are you? There, eight. Oh, well, yeah, okay. <laughs> right about seven gallons. And I think that's what I think my recipe was shooting for. So I cannot be picky about that. I want to let this finish dripping the rest of the way. There's a little bit of work that came out of there. I'm just going to pour you back on top. And, uh, okay, I was just being paranoid. It's working great so far, folks. Okay, I got to re remove this thing one more time because I was so enamored by this new uh, gadget and the app that came with it that I totally forgot my recipe re uh, requirements, which for this recipe, I was putting in a first wort hop edition um, of some hops here. So I should have actually had that in there before I started doing all this. So now... Uh, my bitterness and my intent is kind of disrupted a little bit, but you know, this is all about experimentation and trying new things and uh, This might be good or better than my original intent. I don't know, right? So let's go ahead and let that go and Continue on Here's something I didn't notice before um, when I first looked at the app they, they tell you what your mash uh, step mashes are for mash one or mash out and then they have a sparge step here when I picked on sparge step my recipe that I'm making has some first word hop additions which told me um, Right here. So as part of the sparge to add the first word hops I have so many times in the past and even very recently uh, forgot to add uh, My first word hops when, when, it's, when it's supposed to go in um, as part of the laudering process or or the sparging step so this is kind of cool that this is a sort of a reminder for you um, because I don't know how many times I've either forgot or got it in there late or whatever. So that's really cool. And while I'm in the app, also under the boil, if I, have, if I pick on it, um, it'll expand it and tell me what my hop additions are and when. So 60 minutes is my um, yeast nutrient. And then I have hops at 15, 10, and 1 minutes left. And I have different quantities and different types of hops in here as well as my world flock tablet it tells me to put it in there and I, I entered all this into my um to my recipe on the uh, grandfather website here so it's all populated in here for me uh, this is really nice uh you know i i have my own spreadsheet that i had for years to do this and uh, the fact that this app comes with this kind of stuff uh, for the device is pretty cool all right Let's remove this thing. It's down to just a drop every so often. I'm not going to let it sit here. It's almost to a boil already. And it says to not leave this basket in place when it comes to a boil. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this right now. All right. Now it's starting to foam up in there already. I'm going to go ahead and stir this up really good. And the directions say to scrape the bottom. I'm not quite sure where the bottom is. There's stuff down there. <laughs> so, um, I want to just make sure I, I don't knock the uh, filter that's in there off. So that's a concern, but I uh, hope, hope I didn't knock it off already, but we'll see. All right, it's apparently it's, it's, it's at a boil, so uh, let's make sure we stir down the foam that's rising. You can also skim it too, but I'm just going to let it stay in there. So it's at a pretty decent boil. I mean, for the underpowered US version that I have, it's, uh, I mean, it's going. It's boiling just like it would if I was using my propane burner, uh, turned down a bit, of course, to minimize the evaporation rate. But it's, uh, you know, it's, it's working. It just took a while for it to get there. Well, I made another mistake here, folks. It, there was a boil timer waiting for me to, to press start on the app, which it was not in the instructions as far as I can read here. So uh, I didn't notice this for uh, at least a few minutes here. So my boil time is going to be a bit longer. I guess I could adjust it here somehow. Um, but uh, let's see here. Well, at the moment, I can't figure out how to do it right now. But it's okay. It's only a few more minutes. It's not a big deal. 
Well, look at that. Add 60 minute edition now. <laughs> that's awesome. Set to dismiss. There we go, folks. That's uh, so that was for my yeast nutrient edition, in case you were wondering. And uh, all right, I like these reminders. <laughs> it helps when I'm uh, in the middle of doing other things and I, f I forget what time it is. It's awesome. All right, that was my add 15 minute edition now. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, which for my recipe was some more hops and a roll flock tablet. So I'm going to go ahead and just dump that in there. All right, there we go. 10 minute edition time. And this is pretty cool with the reminders. This is, uh, you know, I turn my back and the next thing I know it goes off and I forgot how fast time flew. So this is really useful. All right, add one minute edition left. Here we go. Boom. All right, it's almost done here. All right, boil is finished. Now the manual says to use a stirring spoon or stick to create a nice, nice big whirlpool in here, which I would normally do, but I have a new toy. I got this. There we go. Made fast work of that. All right, now I gotta put this on here. And now I got my counterflow work chiller that came with this thing here. Okay, it's gonna go on here. And it's right, um, it's a hole in the lid that the bottom of this thing fits right in to hold it in place, which is pretty cool. All right, so that goes on there. And this piece screws onto the valve here. Okay. Snug that up. I'm going to turn on the valve here so I don't forget that this time. Now I need to recirculate this thing. And what I want to do here now is I know it's just going into the boil, but I'm just a sanitation Nazi in a way. I just want to make sure everything's sanitized. So this is supposed to go back in here, right? And now I recirculate. So what I do here is move this stuff out of the way. This will come later. And I am supposed to start pumping. I hear it gurgling. There it goes. All right, so now what's going on here, for those who are new to brewing, uh, and those who are familiar can ignore my advice, but it's basically recirculating the hot wort through these uh, chiller lines to sanitize these lines uh, with the hot liquid uh, to keep germs and bacteria and other things from growing in your beer later. So what, that's what it's doing now. It's just going through this entire wort chiller and going um, up through here, in through here, down through all these hoses, then coming out the back here and back into the pot. So it's just recirculating. And I'll let this go for, according to the directions, at least five minutes, maybe up to ten. And while the wort is, re is recirculating, I'm going to go ahead and set up my recirculating wort chiller here. Kind of, uh, again, it is middle of winter time. I don't, still don't have access to my hose in the backyard for a water supply. So I have to do things the hard way here during the winter time, which is just par for the course around here. So this is the, uh, the cold water hose. This is, uh, came with a few different attachments here uh, with it. This is the garden hose or laundry tub, I think, uh, adapter. And of course I have my existing garden hose adapter here. Um, it doesn't have that many threads on it, so that's kind of a downer. Uh, but so this has a lot more threads than this thing does. So this may leak. I may have to tighten it really hard here. And it doesn't spin, so I have to kind of wind it up counterclockwise or clockwise and then Get it on there. It's getting started is kind of hard, folks. I hope it's on there all the way. We'll find out when I turn the water on, yeah? And then the hot hose, when it comes time, is going to go uh, ultimately back in here to recirculate because this is my recirculating work chiller uh, uh, contraption. But the first few gallons are going to be super hot, so I have a spare bucket here mm -hmm. off to the side. That I'm going to drop it in and collect the hot water to minimize how much uh, ice or snow I'm actually going to use today and also to give me some hot water for washing up with later.
Okay, this thing has been uh, running through probably between five and 10 minutes here now. I lost track of time. It's been at least five minutes, but no more than 10. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and redirect and turn on the water here and we're gonna see what happens, yeah? Okay, I got a couple of gallons of hot water in there. That's a good start. I mean, the water's still hot, but not too hot. I'm gonna go ahead and just dump it in here now. Actually, got a little system here, just like that. Let's check the flow right here. It's a trickle, but again, it, well, actually, that should be the pump giving me that uh, speed. So the pump inside the grandfather is pumping it at that speed. Uh, so it's kind of slow, but maybe that's what's necessary. So I've never had a counterflow work chiller before, only the immersion chillers. So um, I don't know if that's normal or not, but it'll get there. Well, it's chilling. It's working fine. It's just slow. No worries, though. Time for another beer or two. Huh? <laughs> well, that's about it, folks. About, uh, was it there? A little over five and a half uh, gallons. So, uh, of course, you can see there's a lot of true gut in here. A lot of it. So, um, I'll have to explore to see what happened there. Let's take a look inside the device, shall we? Take a look inside. Oh. And you can see there's a, there's a fair amount of hops residue still in the bottom, so, so that's not a problem, but oh, I see the problem. I see why the flow rate was slow. You can see here, I've already disturbed it, but this whole uh, filter here was caked like this with uh, probably mostly hop residue along with other trube, and it was blocking the filter. So the filter was doing its job, keeping the stuff from going into the pump. But uh, that was probably why it had such a low flow rate, I imagine, huh? Look at that, I can scrape it all off there. So that is something to be considered a lesson learned. I may have to go back to the old days of using hop bags again, uh, or a hop spider or something to keep the hops out from the bottom of the kettle. When it came to cleaning, it was almost a breeze. It was a much better experience than my normal Brew day cleanup process with my kettles and coolers and hoses and everything. Since this thing's a really small device and largely clean in place, it actually went pretty well. All right, time to clean up here. So I gotta dump out what's left in here into another vessel. And this thing's cooled down enough to grab up here at least and down below here. So I'm gonna go ahead and tilt this over and dump what's in here out into an empty bucket here. Okay, now we remove the filter. And go get that cleaned up and washed out. All right, all clean there. Let's go ahead and put that back on. Now I need to empty the grains out of here in order to, to uh, clean the inner basket. You can dump it into a compost bin, but since it's a uh, cold winter outside, I'm not doing that. I'm going to be probably just put them in a different bucket to cool down before I throw them in the trash, unfortunately. So let's take a look at the bottom of this thing because I've been reading and seeing a lot of pictures online of people who talk about scorched um, burner elements or the bottom here being blackened. And to me, it's fine. Uh, nothing burnt, just a little bit of 
of uh, gunk on there and it just rubbed right off after soaking at least for a bit but uh, I used PBW if you didn't know that for my cleaning and it seems to work fine so uh, uh, no, no problem on this batch at least This thing stores very nicely, as you can see here. I have it next to my uh, my 20 gallon pot and burner with the tank next to it, of course. And and that's just not all. I mean, the grandfather is sitting there with its chiller on top itself in that little footprint there, whereas my other system, not only do I have that large kettle and burner and propane tank, I also have a large cooler mash ton, hoses, pumps, immersion chillers uh, all over the garage here, eat up a lot of space. So uh, that's a huge advantage of this device. I told you this was going to be a long video, and if you're watching this, congratulations, you made it all the way through. I'm proud of you. Uh, so I must have done something to keep your attention for this long, or either that or you're really into the grandfather. Uh, it was a really long video. I didn't want to cut too much out. I cut a little bit out here and there. I'm trying to get it under an hour, which I did. But uh, I didn't want you to miss too, too much of this because I thought having the immersive experience of walking through this, you might see some of the uh, joy I had using this thing and some of the hassles that I avoided as compared to let's say my old five gallon system with the propane burner and the multiple coolers and all that right this was a this was a an absolute joy to actually use I actually ordered already and have received the grain coat for this thing which is like a foam in, insulator to go to wrap around this thing and I bought that because it's a uh, cold winter here in my garage even with, with the heat on it's not that warm i have the u.s version so it's a little underpowered at being 110 volts uh, i think it's a 1600 watt element rather than a 2000 watt element in the international version so i got this grain coat to help me heat up my water a little faster next time i think i'm i'm, I'm going to use that in my next brew going forward i'm not sure what i'm going to brew yet on this but i was thinking some possible ideas for the for the system uh, alongside my 10 gallon system for those of you who are wondering well Larry you just built a 10 gallon system months ago why are you going back to a five gallon system well when I built that 10 gallon system I realized that um, wow I kind of like to have a five gallon system again just to do experimental brews I built the 10 gallon system so I can brew proven recipes in larger volumes and, and, and thus saving me time from having to brew twice as often but what, what about new things I want to try? I don't know if I want to brew 10 gallons or something I've never brewed before and not, and not know if, if I like it or not. So I, I see this grandfather filling the niche, at least in my brew house, of being sort of a pilot system, uh, an indoor pilot system for the cold winters, for doing smaller batches, experimental batches and the like, or even the times where I just don't feel like pulling out all the gear, honestly. This thing was an absolute blast. So I hope you liked this video. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it. If you're a new viewer, Please subscribe. I got a lot of other great videos. Well, at least I think they're great. Hopefully you will too, right? And uh, comment down below. Let me know what you think of this device. Um, and uh, other than that, I will talk to you all next time. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out other videos on my YouTube channel. And don't forget to subscribe.